Hey, it's Don the Ox Professor. Today I'm going to go into um, something kind of different here. Um, I've talked about these, the Elvis stuff I got this past week. I'm not one to rehash or kind of go back over the same material, um, but I am going to touch on this again because um, some more developments happened and I just wanted to address this and show you another way to develop contacts and actually increase your profits tenfold possibly even. So now I had showed this. This is an authentic Elvis autographed uh, 8x10 autographed. Now it turns out in person um, in the whole work. So I know some more information on this. And I also showed this the other day, which is another brochure from the 1977 um, actual tour. Elvis was in town in this area twice, 1956 and then in 1977. I have a ticket. These were bought together, I assumed, because there's a ticket from 1977 from here in Toledo. And this came from one of my pickers, while this, on the other hand, came from someone else. So after talking to the gentleman I got this item from the other day, talking about something completely different, unrelated, we got to talking about Elvis. And it turns out that this item was actually acquired at the very same place that this item was acquired by two different people. Not a uh, odd circumstance, never thought about it, never crossed my mind that there would be any connection to them. Um, but now it turns out there was. So after digging a little more, I got some more information on this and I actually went to um, part of the source of uh, these items, where they showed up at. It's a, a business actually that I've dealt with before. I've talked and we went back and forth a few times. I was actually able to get some contact information for where these actually came from um, to try and get a provenance for them. When you send in an autograph of, of most people, it's only th 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Elvis is 200 just because of so many around and the value that most of his goes for. His goes for way more than most uh, musicians and actually uh, it goes in the same range sometimes of like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln's autograph, believe it or not. It just depends on what it is and what it's on and how old it is and how it was signed. There's a lot to autographs, mind you. So anyway, after I track down to get the provenance and I'm talking to, to a family member who actually was the present owner of this stuff. I got some more information and it turns out that uh, after talking this was actually acquired here in Toledo in uh, 1956. Now I originally thought this brochure was 57 but this turns out I've tracked down the information. This is 1956. Um, I know when this was uh, you know pretty much made. I can tell the images. I've tracked down the photo after this conversation. I verified some other information mentioned um, and what this actually led me to was buying some more items from the estate and that's why this lot and I will say lot because these now all belong together they're from the same person they're from the same performer and they all from the same city so this is something with the provenance now uh, tied to a specific person after I bought a bunch more records in the hopes now and I, I didn't go into a bunch of details it wasn't the the issue here um, and after looking and going through her collection I actually found this which is actually uh, another autographed Elvis item. It's an LP. Uh, prior to this, I have two 45s both autographed by him. I have never had a LP. This matches everything else as well. The record's from 1956. It came out shortly before his um, actual appearance here in town. So this would have been available. I mean, everything that I've dealt in, in the information that I was given, the provenance for these pieces, all fits to every single piece of information that I have personally got um, in regard to this. So again, I spent a few more bucks on this one, obviously, but now I've got two autographs, a book that's actually pretty decent, some provenance, which actually ties this all together into a specific person, a specific event, a specific town, even the time that this was actually purchased. It could all be tied down. So it increases the value immensely. And I'm going to go into this in just a second here and show you how we determine whether this was bona fide and worth sending in again. Now I've got two Elvis autographs. Um, both sound, seem, look, everything about them is seeming legit. And now with the provenance, I can uh, uh, risk the $400. Again, $200 a piece for these items to have them uh, PSA and uh, DNA um, 
certified as authentic. So again, you want to be sure on it. Um, and just by being sure, I found more information that, that led me to something else. So anyway, we're going to go to the screen and we're going to go into the depth into this just a little bit here now. Okay, so now here's what I just got. This is Alvis's second record. It was released in 1956. Um, and this came from the same collection, the same person that the other items came from. The Alvis 1977 book with the Alvis ticket, as well as the 1950s, well, it's 56. Um, I thought it was 57, but the book is was actually made in 1956, as well as the 1956 love me tender photo that was a promotional item and the autograph photo that i have now i researched these drastically i spent a lot of time usually more than i would because we're talking now five maybe even ten thousand dollars for something as a lot with the provenance basically the the proof of where it came from who acquired it or how it was acquired you know how this these items came to be I'm showing you up here you see the record which is what we're talking about you'll see the top two images are the front and the back of the record and then down below is the actual autograph which is on the disc itself on the label so that is this piece here um, we're gonna pop over here now and I'm gonna show you the tour book cover and the actual uh, photos as well too so you can see the tour book I'll should in fact let's show you the front and back of the tour book um, and just because this is all going to play into this in just a second here and you can see how the research can bona fide something and back up a person's story so you have better information and be able to sell the item for more money and in, in lucky cases sometimes when you research and you track down somebody who may have owned something you can get a uh, a provenance, a letter, um, notarized, signed, and, you know, posted as this thing is real and this is a statement from the person you got it from. That is something that, you know, goes along with items many times that can increase the value greatly. So I've researched this. And as you see, here's the booklet. And now here's the two photos. One's Love Me Tender, and the other one is the autographed one I got the other day, which I thought should be worth at least $1,000, which I'm sure it is. It's probably worth way more than that from the research and some of the information I got since I've reached out to a few people now. And I've actually got some very good, very nice information and some you know pricing shot back at me before. I may just list it or I may hang on to it for a little while and include it in some other um, major or bigger auction of like a, a um, rock and roll collectibles because I may be able to get much bigger money for it to the right uh, line like a Sotheby's auction or something like that you may get fifteen twenty thousand dollars for a provenance letter or a provenance photo tied with a you know album and the whole works purchased from the same place so anyway I've researched it, and as you see here's the second one and then I'm just gonna quickly show you just right now a comparison of the two autographs because he signed them very differently and that's what scares me on sometimes when when autographs show up and he's the uh, artist signed them so many different ways but these are both legit um, I've looked into it very very uh, much as I said and I've actually found some PSA photos of PSA ones in the cases um, from somebody who I know who show you know different types of, of autographs and this pretty much matches them on both of these it just depend on the the tool he was using to sign the autograph and what the material was he was signing so, you know, a marker is more fluid than say a pen on a photo let's just say so because it's a marker on the actual LP and then it's a pen on the photo so you know it, you can only write certain ways on certain items I run into the same thing with printed postcards uh, you can't sign on the face of some of them without either ruining the print or without having other issues involved with it so that's why um, he signed with different types of instruments on these things so anyway those are the autographs and we're gonna go into here now we're gonna pop to a screen and I'm gonna show you how I verify all this and how this all can be verified the story is that this person's family member acquired this at the show the album was bought at the show the photo was acquired at the movie theater because Elvis's movie was playing at the same day so her relatives saw Elvis in person in the afternoon which was a little surprising why there'd be an afternoon show most performances are at night so I was a little turned off that maybe the information was not correct and the person just misunderstood it or misinterpreted the information so that was some of the information I had and that the photo was actually signed at the show and these were all available at a counter 
in the inside of the Toledo Sports Arena is where the story was. So I've been to the sports arena. If it's the same one that was there in the 50s, it's long since gone from what I understand. I don't go in that part of town. I haven't been to a concert in years, but I used to go to them. And um, so I know kind of where they're talking about and the whole story of it. And there was a story that there was a big fight that day and Elvis got in a fight and he talked about it at the concert. So I don't know how true all of this was. So I've researched it. I started with just the bare basics. So from here, I wanted to verify the information that I had. And I actually wanted to research to make sure that all of this stuff fit. Let's say the album was actually even out at the time. It could have come out after the concert. Was this booklet literally available at this specific concert? Was it printed in time? Would the photo of Love Me Tender been legit? Did Love Me Tender come out at this point? Um, was there an early concert in Toledo that day? Which, again, I have no clue at this point. I'm just listening to some information. I've tracked down the record from this lady who um, is the family member of the person who got this. This person was a lifelong Elvis fan. She saw him in 1977, just before he died. He died four months later, apparently. So all of this would fit if this information all comes together, and I would have provenance to actually increase the value greatly. It could double or triple the value of this. But one Elvis autograph's worth at least, I would say at this point, at the right spot, $1,400. If it's PSA now, I'm getting higher estimates from the ones that I see in the condition that I have. We could be talking 2000 with the PSA to depending on, you know, the day of the week because it's an early one and I'm now, you know, increasing the value. Now I've got two autographs, the history and everything tied to it. So I've tracked down the record information, real easy to do nowadays. In college-wise, when I was there, we had to use, you know, library sources and, you know, scientific journals and things along that line, which are very specific and a lot harder to find. So we all now have the ability to do top-notch searches to increase the value and make bigger profits from just that one purchase. I don't have to source and go all over the place if you find the right items and you're digging for the right things at the right places. Tracking down this information was key. Finding out that my my pickers picked at the exact same location is key. Not knowing that when I bought the items and not thinking anything of the fact that they both had similar type of items didn't dawn on me at all until I talked to one of my pickers and I was going to his house and we were chatting back and forth about some items and he said, yeah, I was at this sale and the other one already told me that so they both were at the same sale. The items were found in different areas. It's just lost, just random items apparently at a, uh, a, a sale that they purchased. So... You know, it's just a coincidence. I tracked down the sale. I tracked down the person, the, the relative. Um, I, you know, offered them, f you know, compensation for their time if they would be willing. I was able to source a bunch of records and come to find one that's autographed. I paid up for this, so I didn't, you know, this isn't a cheaper purchase, but it's a great investment for, with what I have into this. So, you know, this one single... Uh, happenstance of getting two different pieces from two different uh, sellers, putting the pieces together, the puzzle. It's basically like a mystery, a, a treasure hunt to honestly say. And other people do this too. Certain people looking for records will put out flyers to every person around a plant that existed. This is a true thing that happened to find the rarest record in history. And things like this happen. This is how people research. This is how other fields research it. So I delved into this. I spent some a little bit of time, but it well all paid off. I could have just blown some time. Big, big whoop, I guess, at this point. I already made some good money or will off the, the, the first uh, autograph. But looking into it, the 1956 record came out in October 19th of that year. So I wanted to verify that, you know, the Toledo concert, the whole information on the dates and such forth, he was only in Toledo twice. I know that for fact. Once in the 50s and then once in 1977. So I tracked down information literally on Elvis. This is a picture of him in Toledo. Toledo performing, and the performance was November 21st. So the Alvis record that we just looked at, this 1956 record, came out October 19th on the stands, everywhere available. So definitely the record would have been pushed at every show after that point um, as well. And not to mention at the same time, she said that Elvis had Love Me Tender in Toledo. I have verified, yes, it was. This same page here goes into that as well. Not only that, I've looked up Love Me Tender, and Love Me Tender came out in 
uh, November 15th of 1956. So yes, it was in theaters at that time. So that first unsigned photo that I have was available and was acquired by the story I was given at the show that day, the same day as concert seen later on. His concert was in the morning or afternoon. Uh, early afternoon was the statement. So I look over here, and sure enough, there was two concerts, which usually he didn't do. There was a 2.30 performance and an 8 p.m. performance here in Toledo at the same time frame. So yes, everything is legit. Everything is available at the time. Nothing uh, stated to me at this point is incorrect whatsoever. Everything matches by time, by availability, the whole works. So the record is legit time frame it's got a stamper on it as well a stamper is a mark that's etched into the dead wax which is the space between the actual tracks of the record and the center printed label and in there it's got an s1 stamper which means it was one of the first ones off the line now s1 doesn't mean it for every record but for this one the information that i find says s1 is the first pressing so this record would have been pressed at or, or, or you know available first at the actual release date of October 19th so it would have been in this first run so it's not only a a um, legit record of the time it's a legit pressing of that same record the the matrix on a record are similar to uh, like date codes and food it's basically a similar thing so if something happens and there's a bad pressing they know where these pressings were sent so they can pull them back and do a recall or something along that line so everything is legit so far what I have now the booklet as well too. I the signature I got with the photo and that came with the booklet too. I wanted to research that a little better too. So I did research that and I found actually this is the exact same booklet that I have. The 1950 in fact here's the cover of it here. This is the same booklet. Um there pictures a little off here but on the back of it which is this right here it's the same basic signature that I have with the lines going down like this it's got the E the the L everything so this is very close there's a smooth flowedness to it it's how he signed it it's on a vintage piece from the exact same tour that this came off of so you know the the, the autograph so everything looks legit it's signed with the ballpoint pen it's blue everything is legit there as well too so we're off to a great start on that too now the photo he's wearing a specific shirt so I wanted to check down and make sure this photo would have been available at that time so I've delved into that part of it too so you got to look at every aspect of this so as I'm looking into it I'm spending some time I spent some hours on this you know I've got three hours I would guess into all of the the work onto this but we're talking you know maybe ten fifteen thousand dollars maybe even more at a huge major New York City auction so you know it's worth my time this could be you know um, a couple months worth of income extra for us so you know you you've really got to take this seriously so don't do this for every item of course but we've got something here that's beyond scarce to have two autographs now i've got a bunch now i've got a handful of them you know that we've already acquired all together counting these so you know they're not they're not going to never turn up for you you know but this is just a phenomenal thing for us again he was here in town so i look for certain things i collect certain things so that shirt he wore at a specific event in uh, September 1st through September 3rd of 1956 for a recording event where he was doing another record. So this is all tying in. He's got this shirt on right here. This is a known shirt. This is a known photo. Um, there he is again with the same one, the same hairdo. It even has that flip up that's actually in the photo that I have right there. So again, everything is legit with the photo. The, in fact, here is a photo of the album that's, you know, they're pushing with that some of that recording session you see there. So again, this is all tying together for everything I've got here. So again, here's the booklet. The booklet did come out. It's his second tour book he came in. This was from 1956. And the next tour booklet, not only is that, but I looked through the tour booklet as well. And right there is the same 
copy. Now, this isn't the real photo. This is a copy of the actual photo that I have signed. This is in the next booklet that came out in 56 after this. So again, the tour that, that was here in Toledo is, is November uh, 21st. This was in prior to that too. So there was actually two booklets available within a month's time frame. So again, everything ties to it. The photo is from 1956. The photos, you know, the signature is from 1956, November 21st. So everything is tying together. There's no challenge to the story. There's no reason to doubt it at this point because it all goes together. She He's got the ticket. There's even photos that I've seen of this specific person that um, are at the 1977 show. So everything fits together. You know, the story, some written information that was shown to me all across the board. Everything seems to match. Here again, here is the, the Toledo photos from the actual Toledo concert. Now, the photo that was signed, obviously he wouldn't be wearing that outfit here. There's even a ticket from it as well. Now, the other part of the story was that there was a fight involved. Now, this article right here is from um, another Alvis page. Alvis rumbled in a Toledo bar, then rocked on stage is the basic gist of it. Um, this was a four-city tour where he stopped in another city, went to Troy, I think, Ohio after this. Um, and he was very popular. Let me look down here and see where I, I did read this whole thing a couple times, not just this one, but some other ones on this event. And sure enough... A, he was eating in a restaurant. I've, when I was a kid, this same restaurant used to have a huge buffet with crab legs. My parents took me there once in a, once in a while, and they ate, uh, ate out at the same restaurant, the same place before. It's the Commodore Perry Hotel in the Shalimar um, Room Bars where he was at, but we've eaten in that hotel myself um, anyway. It was a well-known hotel. It was like one of the luxury ones in the city at the time. So that makes perfect sense about the whole story. Now, apparently, a husband was all upset and, and uh, come running in there and started a brawl stating that his wife won't keep a picture of him, but will keep a picture of Elvis in her, her purse. So it started a fight and a brawl and all these kind of issues happened. It's a big, long story. I mean, it was rather interesting. I never even knew anything about this until I heard that. So again, everything that was said, including the rumble, the fight that Elvis got into that he mentioned there, is all true. There's actually bona fide information. I've actually found a story in a newspaper about this as well. So everything is legit on this. And it even talks about souvenir albums. Um, that you could buy at the show as well as photographs and things like that. So I've got a tour program. I've got an actual album. I've got a photograph. All of this stuff was available there. I've actually found record and notices that they did give out the cheaper photos of Love Me Tender when that movie was out that day here in town. You could get souvenirs. So, you know, newspapers are on microfilm and things like that. You can get copies of things sent and stuff. So it may cost you a couple bucks on certain things if you let the newspaper do the research. But... I've done the research now. I can pretty much confirm that this story is legit. The, the signatures look legit. Again, I'm probably going to send them off um, to try and increase the value here as well, too. So I was going to split these up at first and sell the booklets separately and, and, and such forth. But at this point, I've got a grouping that belongs together because it's tied with the same provenance. It's tied with the same history. The same information goes together for all of these items. So not only do they go together, it increases the value greatly. So a little bit of time doing proper research, not just glancing at something, but taking the time to do it properly and to research good sources, not just one source, but to verify it. I verified the same information on this same site talks about the the fight. It talks about the concert in general. It talks about merchandise. Some of the other information I found even shows some of the stuff that was available. It shows uh, like the souvenir gift area counters at some of these shows. So again, all of this stuff was available there. The record ties and everything ties into this. So again, I can't express enough how much research can change um, you know, your business around if you're doing the proper stuff and not just researching the items, researching where to find the items. I tracked somebody down. You know, are you able to do that? Is it something you want to do? Again, you've, there's a fine line. You don't want to be bugging people. You don't want to be invading someone's privacy. You've got to address and breach this area very lightly. Um, you know, don't go aggressive. Don't, you know, a no is a no. 
uh, just be polite, courteous, you know, and, and offer them, you know, to compensate them for their time if need be. But again, you could be wasting money and time by doing this. It could have led me nowhere. But, you know, this one I had a good hunch on. I had a hunch that, you know, these items were probably scattered through this person's collection. A lot of this kind of stuff at, sh at sales or events or places where you can get people in and, and they can buy stuff, they might have a couple different sales and they'll pull stuff out over a week or a couple days time frame, which is the case here. So they didn't turn up all at the same time. They didn't turn up from the same person. Uh, a happenstance of asking the right questions to a person I buy stuff from led me in this direction. And sure enough, it led me to, to one of the biggest scores of the year. Uh, I'm sure this will probably be my biggest score of the year. Um, I'm, you know, looking at thousands of dollars from this one purchase. I'm estimating if I if I literally have the the two autographs sorted, spend four hundred dollars, send them off, have them both, you know, encased, PSA, DNA, um, registered, the whole works as bona fide autographs. I'm looking, you know, minimum, and I mean bare bare bones minimum, like six seven thousand dollars. I'm probably thinking if I push these up to a Sotheby's or a major heritage auction of rock and roll memorabilia, it could be $20,000 with the provenance, with the history. Without the history, you know, eight, ten thousand 10000 maybe we might be talking about here. But, you know, this isn't life-changing, but this is enough to buy, you know, a kid a car or something. So, you know, it's these type of purchases that, that keep me going strong as can be because, you know, we, we have small wins, as long as it's a win, I'm happy. But this is a monumental win for us, for anybody buying these kind of things. And it's not impossible to find this. It's not like you find these crazy things. It's not a crazy thing. It's not something odd. It's something missed. I'll have to get a video together here, too, and show you some of the autograph records I've run across over the years. I've bought them at Savers, at Goodwill, at Salvation Army, with autographs on the face of the cover. It's just something we find. I find them on 45s quite often. Not necessarily these big famous people, the king of rock and roll at the time. Uh, so, you know, they do show up, though. So don't be discouraged if, you know, you, you, you can't find something specific. It's, t it's time. It's taken me a long time to, f to find this. And this is all from one specific score, basically. Um, three different purchases, but one specific location. So it was just, you know, an uh, interesting, great experiment for me to dig into this and research it to come up with this. So, again, this is score of the year just before Christmas. Obviously, this won't be sold immediately at all if we do sell it. Um, there's going to probably be some local people that have already shot some uh, some messages to me on a possible purchase. So it may not even have to go up anywhere. I don't know. It just depends. The history of it, you know, local collectors really, really go crazy when they can tie it to a specific concert that they were at. So, you know, that's that's a good plus for me. So I've talked to some people who are at one of these shows here in town. So you know, at, at that specific one, the 1956 one, to be specific. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Again, it, it takes this dedication and this much research sometimes. You know, don't just do it on an average postcard or an average, you know, piece of paper or something, but something like this, you want to be sure. You don't want to invest another $400 into something to get it sorted, these two items, and find out it's bogus because you didn't do your homework. Everything I'm showing you looks legit to me. And, you know, matches what was told to me, matches the items as well, too. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. This is probably our biggest score of the year. Um, you know, possibly 15000 or even higher at a high-end auction. So this probably won't touch eBay at all. Um, I may update you on the progress on this. So um, it's it's gotten to be a, a fairly uh, interesting thing for us. I've actually received some local offers on it. So, um, you know, I, I'm not even sure what we're going to do with this yet. But again, this is a huge score for us. Um, never been this lucky on some Something like this again I do research I do dig into stuff it helps to know people to have connections to know where stuff might have come from or to know that there was multiple items at the sale and all the estate wasn't for sale and things like that and anyway um, that's what I have for you today hopefully that gave you some insight into this and some thought 
on keeping connections and working on connections. Don't rush it. Take your time with anything. And again, it, it's taken me years to get these contacts to any way where I can even get a remote interest in, you know, helping me out a little bit here. So some are great, some help, some don't. Some are, you know, just helping depending on what they can get out of it. So again, connections and talking is great. But well, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.